What's up beautiful people? Jen here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jenna Lee, aka Jen Sparkly, commander of the Sparkle Army. Thank you so much for taking a moment to hang out and visit my little corner of the internet. I hope you'll stay and hang out. Um, today is episode one of a new series I'm doing called This Week in Sparkle. Basically, I'm just going to share with you guys a few things that I have found online or news articles, just different things over the course of this week that I found really interesting. And the first thing that I have to talk about because it's just kind of inundated the news is this whole Donald Trump Stormy Daniels thing. Now, if you're not one of those people who watches the news constantly, I get it. I get it. It's a lot. Basically, what's going on is Stephanie Clifford is an actress who performed in adult films using the name Stormy Daniels uh, sometime around 2006. Donald Trump paid her a visit, I believe, at a porn convention where she was entertaining, uh, signing autographs, etc., etc. She was, she was, and still is, a big name in that industry. Very, very pretty girl. Very. I've never watched her movies, but, hey, when you're gorgeous and people will pay to watch you have sex, make your money, girl. I am not mad at it. Anyway, evidently, they had dinner together. It led to a consensual, yet adulterous, sexual relationship, and... That all took place as Donald was apparently newly married to Melania. This led to, down the line, there being discussions of NDAs, which stands for Non-Disclosure Agreements. Basically, all in all, what it comes down to is Trump's people did not want Stormy Daniels to go to the press or really anybody with information of this affair. Evidently, there was talk that she was going to give a pretty uncensored, straightforward interview to In Touch magazine. They say they have a non-published interview with her. Well, over time, several documents have come forward, but the signature for Stormy Daniels kind of looks a little different in each one. She ended up going on Jimmy Kimmel and having a whole interview about it, and it was very awkward. And... I couldn't tell if she was promoting while keeping her mouth shut about certain things. It, it, it was not the most care, carefree, fun interview I've ever seen her give. And she's normally quite bubbly and effervescent. She's normally very, hi, how are you? You know, very cheery. However, now that talks of this NDA have come out, Donald Trump's lawyer, outside counsel, has stated that he set up a shell company with his own money and then paid her $130,000 of his money, but that there was no NDA. The whole thing just feels very shady and very sketchy. Why, as his lawyer, would you have made up this fake company, this shady bank, to pass this large sum of money to this woman? What in the world would you be paying her for? Now that he's openly spoken about that, Stormy Daniels has said, well, by them speaking about it in press, they have voided and violated the original non-disclosure agreement. Therefore, I'm free to talk about whatever the hell I want to talk about, which opens the door super wide for her to get book deals, for her to give interviews to whomever she wants. And she's a smart, enterprising, ambitious woman. That's exactly what she's going to do. Now, where this breaks down and kind of pisses me off is during the Bill Clinton presidency, the Monica Lewinsky scandal damn near derailed him. There was impeachment, there were hearings, there was 
he still gets hung out to dry on a regular basis over Monica Lewinsky. Yet, this isn't even like a bump in the road for Donald Trump. And I end that with this question. Have we as a society devolved so far that adulterous affairs and non-disclosure agreements and hush money are just not shocking anymore? Or is it that we have so little respect for Donald Trump as a human being that those kind of behaviors don't surprise us? What do y'all think? Moving on, something else I've been watching this week. Uh, I get into music documentaries pretty heavily. I just love documentaries of all kinds. So y'all are probably going to hear me talk about a lot of these. The one that I watched this week was called Until the Light Takes Us. And it is a study of the early 90s black metal scene in Norway. I know, that sounds crazy. But... While I've never been a huge, I, I can't sit and listen to, to black metal. It's just not something I can vibe with. At the same time, they are unbelievable musicians. They're, the guitarists and drummers in those bands are absolute forces of nature. They are unbelievably talented. And I will always respect any musician or artist who writes their own material and performs their own creation. It's not prefab, it's not studio doctored, it's, it's pure, it's raw, it's coming from them. So I can always respect that. But what makes this particular scene so interesting is that coinciding with this developing black metal scene was also a time of serious unrest in Norway. There were numerous old churches being torched and burned to the ground. There were ties to Satanism. And you hear conflicting stories. Some people were very much on board with Satanism and wanting to bring down Christianity. And some were more along the lines of just being atheists, but still wanting to tear down Christianity. As the movement progressed and churches got burned down, invariably egos came into play because you have musicians who were doing not only groundbreaking music that has not been done for you, done before, but you also have the ego that comes with being a musician and fostering an entire community. To go with that, there was a suicide in which that person's bandmates used the picture of him laying dead as their next album cover. From there, Fard by Cairns from the band Burza murdered Euronymous from the band Mayhem, served 21 years in prison for it. It's an incredibly intense, heavy, it, it's a very powerful story of just how certain things can breed so much unrest in young people and where that unrest and that passion will take you from creating original new music to committing crimes to promote your agenda to cold-blooded murder. It's a fascinating, fascinating documentary and it's available on YouTube Red. It's called Until the Light Takes Us. Definitely, definitely check that out. If you're into just really dark, fucked up, documentaries and finally this week I have been watching this one channel forever and everyone needs to know about it it's called Aaron's Animals 
And this guy just records these little mini movies of his animals in the absolute cutest situations. He has this adorable Russian blue cat named Prince Michael who looks very spiffy in a plaid button-down shirt. But he basically just shares their little adventures. Prince Michael doing his chores and going to fetch the mail. It's, it's a very, very, very cute channel. And if you're an animal fanatic like me, you'll absolutely love it. So definitely, definitely check out the Aaron's Animals channel as well. Well, I think I have pretty much covered the gamut of <laughs> presidential scandal, Norwegian black metal, and cute cats. <laughs> but that is this week in Sparkle. That's what I've been watching this week. My question to you. What have you been watching this week? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video, share this video, and subscribe to my channel. Every Wednesday we will be doing a live stream. Be sure you hang out for that. And as always, my coupon codes and social media links are all in the description box below. So definitely go shopping, treat yourself, and save money on me. I love you guys, and I will see y'all next time. Y'all stay beautiful.